What's up everyone? Before we get into today's video, let's give a shout out to today's Shogun tier patron. Josh, thank you very much for your support. Now, let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, and this is your first time, welcome. And please, consider sticking around and checking out the rest of my content. But before we get into today's video, I'm going to need you to take a look at this analytic stat bar right there. If you notice, 56.9% of you that watch my content are not subscribed. So if you could do me a favor, turn on notifications and hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss another upload. But with all that being said, we got a lot to get into because we are in the final leg of our journey. Ash challenging the Elite Four. So... Let's get in to What If Ash Won the Sinnoh League, Part 14. I hope you enjoy. When we last left, Brock made his announcement that he would be leaving in a week. Ash and Dawn sit in silence as the Pokemon watch the stunned faces of their trainers. Wait, Brock, what do you mean, Dawn asks. Well, there's a school in the Johto region that takes interns for the program once a year. That time is coming up. Honestly, I've been thinking about this for a while now, since the Grand Festival, actually. But Brock, we need you here. Ash needs you. Dawn, stop, Ash says, with a bit of tremble in his voice. If Brock made his choice, then he made his choice. We all have our own path to walk. If Brock wants to leave, then that's up to him. Now, let's eat. It's been a long day, and we could all use a little unwinding. But Ash, Dawn says, only to be ignored by Ash, as he returns to eating. Later that night, Ash and Pikachu sit outside the Pokemon Center, looking into the stars. Buddy, what a wild ride this last year has been. Who would have thought we'd been taking on the Champions League? I knew you'd make it there someday, a voice says. Turning, Ash sees Brock. Hey, do you mind if we talk? Sure. Take a seat, Ash replies. So, your battle with Paul, that was something truly special. Yeah, things got intense, but the team pulled through. Listen, Ash, I just want to say, I know, Ash responds. I had a feeling that you'd want to take off on your own journey since the summer camp. It was subtle, but I could see your enjoyment in the medical-related tasks. Yeah, that was when the wheels started to turn, Brock says. Don't worry, Brock, I don't blame you. You've been a great traveling companion and an even better friend. I know that things are going to change, as much as I don't want them to. Yeah, but hey, we still have a week, Brock says. And your first battle will be announced tomorrow. So that's something to look forward to. You know, Brock, I'm kind of nervous. I've never been in this position before. Ash, don't do that. You'll psych yourself out. Just be you, and things will work out. Thanks, Brock. You know, I'm going to miss our talks. I know, Ash. I know. The next morning, our heroes are at the Pokemon Center. Conway and Barry are with them, but they are not sticking around. Much like Paul, they have the next leg of their journeys to start. So, they are leaving. But not before the official announcement. The monitor at the main desk lights up. An announcement plays while Don asks Ash who he thinks he will face. Which member of the Elite Four will be Ash's first opponent? It's hard to say, Ash responds. Over the last year, we've met each member, and we had our own interactions with them. The conversation is then interrupted when a picture flashes on the screen. Ash versus Aaron, the bug expert of the Elite Four. The announcement is made for a week from today, the day that Brock leaves. Don sighs a little sad, but Ash and Brock just smile. They have one week of training ahead of them. Meanwhile, across the region at a very familiar training facility, we see Aaron with his Pokemon watching the same broadcast. First, I will beat you, Ash, and then I will get my rematch with Cynthia. Six days later, we cut to the docks of the Lily of the Valley Island. Ash and Don are seeing Brock off, but Don can't hold it anymore. How can you two be okay with this? She yells out of frustration. We're friends. Ash, Brock, you can't just abandon each other at a time like this. Brock tries to respond, but Ash interjects. Don, I know this seems like something that shouldn't happen, but this is part of walking our own path. Me and Brock have traveled together for a long time. The one thing I always knew is that one day we would have to part ways. But why is this so hard? She says. It's never easy, Brock replies, but the pain eventually goes away. It just takes time. Then, the bell for the boat sounds. They are ready to set sail. Well, guys, it's time to go. Brock, knock him dead, Ash says. I will, Ash. And Ash, don't come home without the title. Ash smiles as his friend boards the boat bound for his next adventure. Dawn, with tears in her eyes, just runs off, unable to take the separation. Pikachu wants to give chase, but Ash tells him to stop. She needs the time to work through it for herself. That night, while Dawn works through her feelings, Ash is on a call with Professor Oak. So Ash, this is the team you've decided on? It is, Professor. Well, these choices are fine. So your opponent is Aaron, the bug specialist. Yep, I've been wanting to battle him since we first met a few months back. 
Well, you shouldn't take it too lightly. Bugs are some of the trickiest Pokemon to raise. If a trainer can get to the Elite Four levels with them, then he must be a powerful one. Thanks for the advice, Professor. By the way, how's Charizard and Snorlax? Oh, they're doing great. I'd say in another few days, they'd be ready for use. That's good to know. After all, I'm not sure who I'm going to need to take on the Champions League. Well, Ash, just know we all are all here to support you. Good luck, my boy. Thanks, Professor. The call then ends. Well, buddy, tomorrow is the start of our final Sinnoh journeys. It's been a wild ride. We got you! The next day, the stadium is packed to the brim with spectators, as Ash and Pikachu take to the field. Wow, it seems like it's fuller than it was last time, Ash thinks, but he has little time for his thoughts as the ref is calling him to the center of the field, as his opponent, Aaron, has arrived. The two combatants reach the center. Ash, it's been a while. Hope you're ready. Aaron, we never got a battle, so you better believe you won't be winning this one. I like the confidence, but just know, you're not the only one with a goal here. Once I win, I'll be challenging Cynthia for a championship again. Aaron, only one of us will be walking out of this match with that opportunity. While all this banter is going on, the ref laid down the rules to this match. Ash isn't really paying attention, focused solely on his opponent. So, he blindly says he understands, as does Aaron. With that, the competitors take to their positions on their side of the field, so they can start the first round of the Champions League. Aaron starts off strong, calling, Yeah, Mega, go! The Dragonfly sweeps over the field, demonstrating its amazing speed. Ash looks this thing over, remembering the times he's battled Jesse's Yeah, Mega. If that thing could cause trouble, then this must be a monster. Well, we can't avoid it any longer, Ash thinks. Point out his Pokeball, I'll match your speed with defense. Bastiodon, I choose you. The two-ton shield hits the terrain, ready to finally get its turn to battle in the tournament. So, Ash, defense. That's funny. I never thought you was that type of trainer. Oh well, let's start this battle. Yamega Air Slash. Beating its wing at a supersonic pace, Yamega fires razor-like air blades at Bastiodon, but Ash just smiles. Bastiodon, ancient power. Bastiodon raises its defensive wall, blocking Yamega's attack. This does have one added benefit to Yamega. Its speed boost gets to activate. Then suddenly, it speeds in towards Bastiodon at the command of Aaron. Ash goes on the attack, telling Bastiodon to launch the ancient power. As the boulders fly, Aaron tells his dragonfly to spin and fire one more air slash. The blades slash through the surrounding airspace, grazing Bastiodon with the effect. Ash tries to counter with the Ice Beam, as Yanma is close. Unfortunately, even though the Air Slash didn't really do much as far as damage, it did get the added effect of a flinch. This allows Yanmega to evade everything, retreating back to its side of the field. While Ash may have lost the altercation, he's still not worried. Bastiodon has way too much defense for this thing. It's here that Yamega's speed boost activates again. Now with Electro levels of speed, Aaron calls for his next move, Baton Pass. Suddenly, Yanmega retreats to its Pokeball, much to Aaron's delight and Ash's confusion. Wait. Why would you have a move like that? Why not just recall it? Oh, you'll have to wait and see, Ash. Scizor, go! The Iron Mantis hits the field, ready for battle. Well, I hope this puts up more of a fight, Ash says. The last one was disappointing, thinking to himself, Don't worry, Ash. You won't be disappointed. Starting this battle, Ash calls for a Flash Cannon. Aaron uses his new Mon to counter far quicker than Ash could have seen coming, with a Bullet Punch. Scizor is able to speed past the move, knocking Bastiodon in the forehead. This throws off its aim, while Ash just wonders what happened. Confusion sets in, as Aaron explains that Scizor is only a few moves away from setting up a sweep of Ash's whole team. Wondering what Aaron's battling about, Ash asks if he's feeling alright. Suddenly, the normally calm and friendly Aaron takes a more frustrated tone. It's you and the rest of the Elite Four. You all think I'm a joke. I'm often considered the weakest of Shino's elites. And after that humiliating loss I had at the hands of Cynthia, I was beginning to think everyone was right. But then you appeared, and with it, a whole new realm of possibilities. So once I win here, I will get my next challenge at the championship. No one will stop me. While Aaron is on his little tangent, his companions watch from afar. Flint is a little irritated that Aaron is embarrassing everyone. He wants to go give Aaron a piece of his mind, but Lucian stops him. Let this play out. If Aaron wants to be stronger, then he will have to beat Ash. And remember, this is their first battle, so neither one of them know what the other is truly capable of. Flint turns to Cynthia, but she says nothing, just watching, waiting. Back on the field, Aaron calls for his next move, a swords dance. Scissor sharpens its focus as it waves its pincers in the air at a deadly speed. Ash, still not on to Aaron's game, tells him that his frustration has nothing to do with him. He's just here to battle and win. Bastiodon, use flash cannon once more. A spiral of light shoots down the battlefield. Aaron smiles. Scizor, use sword stance one more time. This leaves Scizor unguarded as he takes the flash cannon at full power. Once the light fades, Scizor is still standing. Your Bastiodon is powerful, Ash, and it was smart to bring a rock type to a battle with bugs. But I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter. Then he commands Scizor's one final move. Baton Pass. Again, Aaron's Pokemon retreats, leaving Ash with a feeling of deja vu. 
it's time, Aaron says. Drapion, go. Aaron's menacing scorpion takes to the field with a thud that says I'm here and I won't be leaving anytime soon. Looking on, Ash thinks something's off. Why would Aaron use a move, this baton pass, to switch Pokemon instead of just recalling it? But still, as far as a type is concerned, Bastiodon still has the advantage. So Ash decides to leave it in. Aaron smiles as the match starts. Ash calls for a flash cannon, hoping to hit for massive damage, but his plan is flipped when Aaron calls for his attack. Drapion, use Earthquake. With the pace of lightning, Drapion strikes the battlefield with the force of a meteor before Bastiodon could even charge its attack. Suddenly, the ground begins to crack under Ash's ancient behemoth as it rocks and shakes, taking critical damage, with Bastiodon collapsing under its own weight. Darn, Aaron says with disappointment, while Ash breaks down what just happened, calling to his tank. Bastiodon, get up, get up. The Iron Titan begins to stir, grunting and breathing heavily. How did that one attack do that much damage? Still haven't figured it out, Ash? Well, I guess it's safe to tell you now, since that it's set up. This battle is mine. That move Baton Pass is more than just a retreat. It allows me to pass any stat boosts that may have occurred during the battle. Now, Ash puts it all together. You can make a speed boost. Scissor's Swords Dance. They were all passed to Drapion. Correct. This has turned it into my ultimate weapon. Its speed. Its power. Not even Cynthia could match it. Up in the Champion's Box, Cynthia concurs. If Eren had used this strategy the last time they battled, then it may have been him sitting here instead of her. Lucian chimes in that while powerful, it's foolish to put all of your hopes into a single Pokemon. That is one thing that Ash has got going for him. Hopefully, he can see it. Back in the match, Aaron comments that it seems even with all of Drapion's power, he still can't overcome abilities as Bastiodon finally gets to his feet. So, sturdy is its ability. Eh, hey, Ash? Ash says nothing, only contemplating his next move. He needs to hit hard, but take a hit as well. That should be Bastiodon, but current events prove things wrong. However, Ash smiles. He'll just have to use his own version of Eren's strategy. Recalling Bastiodon, Ash readies his next ball. So, your spirit isn't broken yet? Well, let us fix that, Eren says. The only response Ash gives is Star Raptor. I choose you. Predatory bird breaks the seal on its ball, taking to the sky, only to meet eyes with its opponent. However, the stare down lasts only for a mere moment, as Drapion breaks eye contact first. Aaron thinks that Ash's choice will get him nowhere, declaring Drapion to fire across poison. Star Raptor breaks it with a steel wing. This negates the attack in its entirety, as Star Raptor strikes Drapion. This gives it a much sought after defense boost to help with this terror incarnate. It appears that we are at a stalemate, Aaron says. You would think so, but it's not that clear cut, Ash responds. We will see about that. Drapion, use Aerial Ace. Drapion uses its mighty legs and tail to gain some massive altitude, with the intention of bringing its full force down on its prey. Smiling, Ash calls for a counter. Star Raptor, use U turn. Hitting on a collision course, the two crash mid air, only for Star Raptor to recall itself to its ball. Running away, Ash? It's a shame. You're just throwing darts at a wall to see what will stick. Oh, trust me, Arian. It's nothing like that. Pulling out a Pokeball? It's been a while since we battled, but that doesn't mean they will win. Squirtle, I choose you. The tiny turtle emerges from the ball, much to the surprise of Dawn, and from a Pokemon Center off in the Johto region, Brock. Back in the battle, Squirtle be ready. This Drapion has been souped up. It nods, ready for the intense battle ahead. Aaron questions Ash's choice, saying that this won't be enough to take down Drapion, as he calls for a cross poison. Ash counters with the Hydro Pump. Unfortunately, the stat boost in effect proves to be too much to block the attack, and the cross poison lands, but only at half power since the Hydro Pump did slow it down a bit. Aaron wastes no time, telling Drapion to grab Squirtle with its claws. At this point, it recedes into its shell. Though this does protect it some, it won't for long, as Drapion holds it in place, firing repeated cross poison. Wanting to bide his time, Ash calls for an aqua ring. Water begins to circle Squirtle, bathing it in a healing aura. That won't save you, Ash. Face it. This battle is ours, as Drapion continues its assault. Ash tells Aaron the protect the castle approach, while effective, has one major flaw. If one piece falls, then the rest will crumble. Declaring he doesn't know what he's talking about, Aaron commands a final cross poison. While charging the attack, Ash knows he needs to time this just right. He tells Squirtle on his command. As the cross poison fires, Ash waits as the high critical move inches closer and closer. Squirtle now, Ash yells. Suddenly, it spins rapidly, so fast that the grip of Drapion begins to smoke from the friction. This has two effects. It breaks the cross poison with minimal damage, and it breaks the hold on it as Squirtle crashes into Drapion, causing it to wobble. Now free, Squirtle lands back on its side of the field, with Drapion finding its bearings from being hit. So, a gyro ball. Great way to break the hold, but it won't save you. We'll see, Ash says. Squirtle, use Hydro Pump. Speeding at a high pace again, Aaron commands an aerial ace. Drapion bursts through, dousing the field in water as it strikes. Squirtle slides back, 
flinching from the damage. Then Drapion is back on the move again with an Ice Fang. This is the moment that Ash has been waiting for. Squirtle, use Mud Slap. Squirtle begins to hurl balls of mud at Drapion, hitting it in its eyes, stopping it in mid-attack. Ash then chooses to recall Squirtle here, as Drapion tries to wipe the mud out of its eyes. Gaining back part of its vision, Drapion looks down at Ash with red in its glare. Perfect, Ash smiles. Star Raptor, I choose you. Once again, it takes to the air with another fly down stare, only for Drapion to flinch. Meanwhile, from a corridor that the combatants use to enter the battlefield, Bertha watches. Looks like Ash has begun pulling apart Aaron's strategy, a voice says. I figured you'd come by, Flint. Are you curious too? This boy is an oddity. I battled him a few months back. He's vastly different as a trainer than he was then. He could make it all the way to Lucian, Bertha says. Well, he'll have to get past me first, Flint says with a bunch of bravado in his voice. Back with Ash, he wastes no time in ordering a steel wing. Aaron retaliates with an ice fang. Star Raptor may be fast, but the speed that Drapion has is much greater, allowing it to land the first strike. This causes Star Raptor to flinch, preventing it from landing its move. However, Aaron is confused. How is Star Raptor still able to battle? Ash doesn't give Aaron a chance to process this, calling for a U-turn once again. Aaron calls for another Ice Fang, but this one misses, allowing the Sky King to safely land its attack before retreating to its Pokeball. Aaron, now frustrated, demands that Ash stops running, face him like a real trainer. This is what Ash was looking for, as he declares, Squirtle, I choose you. Taking the field once more, the leader of the Squirtle squad readies for its next battle. Aaron, I told you, I would beat your castle. This next round will be the end of your plan. Squirtle, use Gyro Ball. Drapion uses Cross Poison at the command of Aaron, but this misses. Squirtle cracks the Scorpion with the bone-shattering crash. This isn't enough to end Drapion, like Ash promised, but it's definitely close to its limits. Ash can see it, and so can Aaron. Knowing he needs to prolong this battle as much as possible, Ash calls for another Aqua Ring. Aaron wastes no time with his free opening, calling for an Aerial Ace. This lands, but again, it doesn't end the battle. It's here that Aaron clues into what's going on. Ash has been picking apart all of the stat boosts one by one. So, you figured it out, Aaron. I told you, your castle would crumble. Realizing he's on the losing end at this point, Aaron calls for one last cross poison. Ash tells Squirtle to counter with the mud slap. The two cancel each other out. In an attempt to end this, Aaron orders one final aerial ace. Ash, knowing this is it, tells Squirtle to ready itself. Use Hydro Pump. As the water bursts from Squirtle's shell, it begins to spin faster and faster. The water acts as a shield that Drapion has to push through, causing the attack to lose power. Eventually, the two collide, expending what remains of their strength, ending in a double knock. Out. Aaron is in awe. His plan has been torn apart by this boy. Slowly, he sees his vision of a victory slipping away. But Ash asks Aaron, what's the matter? Don't tell me you actually pinned all of your hopes and dreams on Drapion. Ash, you don't understand. I worked so hard to get the timing of that strategy down. It was supposed to win my rematch with Cynthia. So, you still have more Pokemon. That was only the first one down. You have a whole team ready to battle. Then, looking at Pikachu, if you put all of your hopes in one Pokemon, then how could you expect the others to want to battle for you? It's here that Aaron has a moment of clarity. His obsession has blinded him. He became single-minded like when he and Wurmple had separated. It wasn't until it was too late that he realized the mistake, the time they lost. It won't happen again. Smiling, Aaron thanks Ash for reminding him what being a trainer is really about. Yenmega, go! Pulling out a Pokeball, no worries. Star Raptor, I choose you. Both battlers emerge from their ball. Immediately, Star Raptor's ability activates, putting pressure on Yamega. Knowing that Aaron is aware of this, he must be careful. Yes, Drapion is down, but he could still use a modified version of his strategy. It's at this point Aaron begins moving pieces like a chessboard, calling for an ancient power. Ash wastes no time calling for a Steel Wing. This shadows the boulders with little effort. This is where the first speed boost activates, as Star Raptor connects with the Steel Wing. This nets a defense boost for the bird. Aaron knows he's pushing, but he needs Yamega to hold on just a little while longer. Calling for an Air Slash, Yamega fires the Air Blades at Star Raptor. It is here that Ash pulls out all the stops. Star Raptor, use Brave Bird. Ash's Sky Warrior bursts into flames as it streaks across the battlefield, connecting with Yan Mega and knocking it out. This causes a flinch of pain as it recoil hits. It's at this point Aaron realizes that even though he said it, he still didn't believe it. He's so focused on setting up that he's not worried about what happens now. That cost him one of his team. Ash can see that something is still bothering Aaron, but he's set his piece. Aaron needs to figure this out for himself if he hopes to win here. Recalling Yamega, Aaron thinks about his options. Star Raptor is going to be a problem for anything he sends out, but he has one that could stave off the battle long enough to take control. Scizor, go! As the Metal Mantis hits the field once more, Ash asks Star Raptor if it can still battle. Without hesitation, it cries, signaling it's going nowhere. 
Wanting to turn the tables as fast as possible, Aaron calls for a swords dance. This raises Scizor's attack greatly. Ash is already aware of what's going to happen, so he wastes no time calling for another brave bird. Again, it collides with the force of a cannon as Scizor is pushed back. Luckily, the steel typing provides some resistance. Staraptor is then hit with a recoil, giving Aaron hope as it begins to breathe heavily. But that hope is quickly shattered as Ash's next command, Roost, bays it in a healing ore. Staraptor once again readies for an attack. But the regaining of a health did come at a cost, as Aaron used this time to stack another sword stance. Feeling Scizor is finally ready, Aaron sends it in for an attack. Ash follows suit with Staraptor. The next few turns are exchanges of bullet punches and steel wings followed by X Scizor and Brave Birds. The result is two very tired and worn out Pokemon in the end. Ash knows he needs to heal again, so he calls for a roost. Aaron on the other hand calls for one final sword stance. Now, Scizor is stronger than anything in the field, but endurance wise, it's going to be a problem. Ash sees this and Aaron sees this. So Aaron does the only thing he can do when Ash commands a steel wing. He orders a baton pass. Then a Pokemon that Ash is all too too familiar with hits the field, a hair across. The beetle is much different than his own. As it emerges, it grabs the steel wing, minimizing the damage that it would take. Aaron tells Ash he had better be ready. If there's one Pokemon in his team that has a natural raw battle ability, it's this Pokemon. Ash can see that Aaron is a lion. This thing has a presence about it. Hoping to end it quickly, Ash calls for a brave bird. Staraptor heeds its trainer's command, bolting down at Heracross. Aaron smiles and utters one command, Rock Slide. Suddenly, Heracross stomps the field with a mighty thud. Boulders begin to rise into the air as Heracross uses its horn to throw them in the path of Staraptor. Ash tells Staraptor to avoid them. While it has great speed and is able to dodge the first few, the fact is that Staraptor is moving too fast to keep changing course and eventually finds itself colliding with one boulder after another. It isn't enough to stop the bird, but it does take great damage as it pushes through to connect with Heracross. Unfortunately, the speed it lost from hitting the boulders cut the power of the Brave Bird significantly. Then it happens. The damage and the increased stats of Heracross was too much and Staraptor collapses under its own weight. This catches Ash off guard. He didn't think that it would take out his mons so quickly. Ash recalling his bird thanks it for the effort that it put in. While the Brave Bird wasn't at full power, Ash can tell that that hit was still a problem for Heracross. Knowing he needs something that can take a pounding, Ash declares, Porkle, I choose you. The Fire Turtle takes to the field, wanting to flex its muscles after the loss it had at the Battle Factory. Aaron is on to what Ash is trying. Type advantage is powerful if you know how to battle with it. Launch starts big. Torkoal, use Heat Wave. A gust of heat whips up, but Aaron counters it with another rock slide. This takes the brunt of the Heat Wave, and the two moves connect with their targets. Heracross shakes this off, while Torkoal is knocked on its side as it spins at a high pace. Seeing this, Aaron capitalizes, ordering a Mega Horn. Ash seeing an opportunity here, tells Torkoal to use the momentum of the spin, and to use another Heat Wave. This causes a fiery wind to develop into a twist, turning into a flaming tornado that catches Heracross. This causes it to flinch from the sheer pain of the attack. Once it dies, Heracross looks like it's down, smoldering from its horn. Unfortunately, this is just a momentary lapse as Heracross bursts to life, striking Torkoal. The power of this strike is too much, sending it toward the stadium wall. At this point, Ash recalls it before it can hit, saving it from a sure knockout. It's at this point that Ash can see Heracross flinch as it becomes apparent that a burn has been afflicted. Wanting to conserve the last members of his team, Ash decides it's time for Bastiodon to hit the field again. Landing with a mild tremor, Bastiodon is visibly winded from the battle with Drapion, but it's ready and it won't go down without a fight. However, Aaron has information that Ash doesn't. Heracross's ability is activated. Guts. It swells up as Aaron commands for a close combat. Ash orders an ancient power defense. Unfortunately, this proves useless as the hulking bug breaks through and hurls one clubbed punch and kick after another, dropping Bastiodon in the process. Ash realizes it was a long shot, but recalls Bastiodon, thanking it for its effort. The one thing Ash has going for him is the burn. Heracross is losing health with each turn that passes. Knowing he needs something that hasn't battled, Ash makes the decision on his next choice. Glalie, I choose you. Aaron is liking his chances here. He has the type advantage, and with Heracross beefed up stats, he knows that he's going to end this. Deciding he wants the first strike, Aaron calls for a close comment. Ash knows he needs to time this quickly. If Glalie is off by a millisecond, then it will lose. As the ice head levitates, Heracross closes in, launching a chop to crack Glalie on the head. 
Ash sees his opening, ordering Glalie to tilt forward. This causes the chop to force Glalie into a spin at a high speed, allowing Ash to give his command. Iron Head. Throwing the weight of its body into the attack, Glalie catches the horn of Heracross, driving its head into the ground of the battlefield. Once Glalie stops spinning, it pulls itself off of Heracross, revealing that it has been knocked out. Recalling Heracross, Aaron thanks it. Things are looking pretty good so far, but they can quickly turn as the young Elite Four member sends back in Heracross. Hitting the field, it's obvious that the time is a factor here. Aaron and Ash can see this, but they both know that this battle will have to happen. Wanting to hold Torkoal and Pikachu as long as possible, Ash keeps in Glalie. This battle starts with the orders of a Bullet Punch and an Iron Head, colliding the two take damage. Unfortunately, even though Scizor has the type advantage, it's slowing down due to how many battles it's had. Glalie isn't in the best shape either. The close combat it took is starting to show as it is moving a little sluggish. With one push, Aaron orders a Bullet Punch. Knowing Ash needs to hold off the damage here, he calls for an Ice Beam. While the move isn't effective, that's not the goal. Ash tells Glalie to pour everything it has into this move. Scizor pushes as hard as it can, trying to reach its target. However, it's too much, as the Ice Beam freezes it into place. With one last move, Ash orders an Iron Head. Aaron won't give in, however, and orders a Bullet Punch. With the last of its strength, Scizor is able to break a claw out from its Ice Prison, smacking Glalie with it. But this isn't enough to ground the levitating head, as it connects, shattering the rest of the ice and this battle. With a deep sigh, Aaron recalls his mind. Well, that was interesting. I thought for sure we had that one, but we still have a chance. Beautifly, go! Ash watches as the majestic bug hits the field. Wow, Aaron must be desperate if he chooses his oldest Pokemon. But I'm not going to argue. Glalie, can you continue? With a response that says yes, Ash keeps it in, knowing that it will be only moves until the battle ends. Starting off strong, Aaron orders a silver wind. A sparkling gust tears through the battlefield, hitting Glalie. In response, Ash orders a light screen to cut the damage. This saves it, but just barely. Knowing he needs to at least get some damage in, Ash calls for an ice beam. Aaron is confident in his abilities to block this, calling for an energy ball. While on the surface, this isn't a move that would end an ice type, it does have an unforeseen side effect. It freezes, but has the energy to push through the ice beam and connect. As the move was turned into a physical attack, the light screen couldn't cut the damage, and Glalie drops in defeat. Ash recalls Glalie. You put in a lot of work. We won't waste it. Ash readies his next ball. Torkoal, I choose you. The fire tortoise hits the field, ready for its chance to make some noise. Well, it looks like we've reached our final showdown, Aaron thinks. Beautiful eye. Let's win this. Use Stun Spore. The agile bug dances across the battlefield, dousing Torkoal in a paralyzing powder. I see Aaron is trying to stop us. Well, that's okay. We don't have speed in mind. Torkoal, use Curse. The fire turtle stiffens itself, hardening its defense, but at a cost. Speed. Aaron doesn't waste any time following up with the double team. He's trying to insulate Beautifly as much as possible. Ash sees this and calls for a rock slide. Unfortunately, that misses due to its low accuracy. This gives Aaron another free double team, now making Beautifly nearly unhittable. Not liking the way things are going, Ash orders another curse, allowing Torkoal to gain another stat boost. The match is at a stalemate, but Aaron won't let it stay that way for long, ordering a Silver Wind. This connects as the rock slide Ash ordered was stopped by paralysis. The Silver Wind also gives Beautifly a much needed stat bonus. This increases its special abilities, which is something it will need to get the damage to end Torkoal. Knowing this, Aaron calls for an energy ball. Striking Torkoal, it pushes his back, but the turtle stands tough with Ash calling for another curse. Aaron is feeling confident at this. He knows things are in his favor, calling for another silver win. While this does connect, there is no stat boost. Ash tries a heat wave, but paralysis takes hold once more. He's beginning to see that there's only one path to victory. Aaron takes this as his chance to unleash an onslaught of energy balls and silver winds, but Ash just keeps calling for curse. It eventually gets to the point that Torkoal is unable to use this move anymore. It's moving at the speed of smell. Aaron knows he's got this one. With one final attack, he calls for an energy ball. Ash tells Torkoal to stand strong. They need to take this attack, throwing Aaron off. As the ball hits, Torkoal flinches. However, this is where Ash makes his move. Torkoal, use Giga Impact. Torkoal begins to move in the direction of Beautifly. Unfortunately, it's moving slowly, fighting the onset of paralysis. Aaron sees this and orders another double team. Unfortunately, Beautifly is near a point of exhaustion from all the attacks it launched. Not wanting to fail Ash, Torkoal bursts with the cloud of soot as a devastating energy surrounds it. Now en route with the collision with Beautifly, Aaron tells it to dodge. 
but it's unable to get out of the way in time. Torkoal connects midair, putting everything it has into its attack. The two barrel into the wall with the weight of Torkoal smearing Beautifly across it. Aaron looks on shocked. While Torkoal was damaged, it is still able to move, although it landed on its back and is now crying as it shakes, trying to get back to its feet. Aaron recalls his Pokemon, accepting his fate. The crowd erupts in cheers, but that's not the focus of Ash. It's Aaron. Without saying a word, he turns to leave. Ash yells, hey, where are you going? We still have one more battle. Turning, Aaron looks puzzled at Ash. But you won. Beautifly was my last Pokemon. Well, I count five. You still have one more Pokemon to choose. Torkoal can still battle, and I still have Pikachu. Aaron begins to laugh. Ash, you didn't pay attention to what the ref said, did you? The Elite Four battles are five on five. The only full battle is with Cynthia, if you can get to her. Confused, Ash watches as Aaron walks away. I'll be rooting for you, he says, as Ash is left alone. It's here that Ash realizes Torkoal needs help, so he runs over to tip it back to its feet. Torkoal doesn't understand what's going on, but Ash thanks it. Thanks to you, we won. Realizing it was the reason for victory, Torkoal begins to cry as the announcement for the end of the battle rings through the stadium. Up in the champion's box? Well, it looks like I'm up next, Bertha says. I can't wait to see what he can do against my team. Later on that night at the Pokemon Center, Ash is on the phone with Brock, while Dawn is kind of hanging out, still a little upset that Brock left. Ash, you did great. Yeah, Torkoal really put in work. Hey Ash, did you really not know that that was your last match? Yeah, I was caught up in the moment, and I wasn't really paying attention to what the ref said. Well, you had better start. You're in the big leagues now. A mess up like that could cost you the match. Only five Pokemon means that your team has less room for error. A serious look dawns Ash's face. I know, we've worked too hard to let that happen again. Glad to hear it, Ash. Well, I gotta go. They keep me pretty busy here. Okay, Brock, I'll talk to you after my next match. With the screen powering down, a voice greets Ash. Turning, Ash sees his next opponent. So, Ash, you will battle me next. Are you ready for my years of experience? You know it, Bertha. There's no way I'm going to bring anything else but my best. With a slight chuckle, Bertha says she's amused by Ash's youth and enthusiasm. She hopes his promise isn't a hollow one. But unfortunately, they will have to wait until next week to find out. She then turns, and with a parting word, she tells Ash not to disappoint her. Don't worry, Bertha. We won't. Over the next week, Ash spends time just kind of hanging out, having Professor Oak send over his Pokemon so he can spend some time with them. Don watches Ash during this time, still upset that he's moved on from Brock leaving. However, without knowing it, she's slowly moving on, as her Pokemon require her attention. This is mostly pushed by Piplup, and it insists that Don and it practice some contest moves. Don can never say no to her starter, so they get to work. While this is happening over the next week, two things happen. Don reignites her passion for contests, going full into training, while Ash, after spending time with his Pokemon, has decided on his team. This wasn't some deep-rooted strategy he came up with, just the Pokemon that he felt most connected with over this mini vacation. Finally, the big day arrives. Ash finds himself in the stadium he's found so many victories in as of late. Across from him stands the oldest and most experienced member of the Elite Four, Bertha. She is stoic in her demeanor, not really saying much. Ash, on the other hand, the excitement he has flowing through him is uncontrollable. He's practically shaking in anticipation. Fortunately for him, the wait is over as the ref calls for the two to the middle of the battlefield. Saying nothing, the two listen to the rules that are laid out. They are the same as the battle with Aaron, a five on five. The last trainer with the Pokemon standing wins. Both agree to the terms taken to their side of the field. Bertha being the defending trainer has the first choice, and it is indeed an all too familiar one as Quacksire hits the field. The dim-witted Mon slowly utters a sleep-inducing battle cry. Ash had the feeling that this would be Bertha's first choice, so he knows who he's going with. Noctowl, I choose you. The Nocturnal Hunter takes to the sky with a gleam in its eye, ready for battle. Bertha is intrigued by this choice and starts the battle with the Muddy Water. Ash tells Noctowl to fly higher to avoid the attack. Easily executing this command, Noctowl then follows up with an Air Slash. Firing the Spear of Air, it speeds towards Quacksire. But Bertha, demonstrating her mastery of the ground typing, orders an Ice Punch that freezes the air, causing it to burst into a cloud of sparkling snow dust. In the stand, Don notices this. Hey, that looks kind of like a contest move. How odd. Back in the battle, with both sides at a stalemate, Ash turns on the pressure. Noctowl, use Hypnosis. However, Bertha is ahead of our young hero, blocking it with a sandstorm. A gust of sand envelops the area, forcing Noctowl to fly higher to avoid any damage. This has a negative side effect in it losing sight of its target. Now things are in Bertha's court. She aims to control the battle with her years of experience over Ash. If he wants to win, then he'll definitely have to earn it. Considering his options, Ash knows one way to even the playing field. Noctowl, use Extra Sentry. Using its big bird brain, Noctowl quickly locates its target. 
Ash orders it to lift it off the battlefield and out of the sandstorm. This takes Bertha by surprise. She hadn't considered Ash bringing Quagsire to him. Bertha orders it to use a dig to counter this. What follows is a tug of war between the two as both struggle to gain control. This is where Ash tells Noctow to dive. The slack between the mental standoff causes Quagsire to lose control. This is where Noctow gains the momentum needed to pull Quagsire up and out of the sandstorm. Ash tells it to spin as fast as it can. Noctow begins at a high pace. Bertha sees Ash's game, so she counters with the muddy water, but to aim it at the ground. This acts like a thruster, pushing Quaxire above Noctow, breaking the hole between the two. Bertha aims to use this position to amplify her next attack. Ice Punch. Noctow has little time to react, so Ash does the best thing he can. Noctow, reflect. A barrier of psychic energy catches Quaxire, minimizing the damage. This causes the opponents to spiral to the ground. Noctow is stunned by the Ice Punch, while Quaxire uses a muddy water to break its fall. Calling to his bird, Ash is able to finally get through, telling it to use Air Slash. Noctow charges the move, firing it moments before it hits the ground. The Air Slash strikes its target, completely unguarded. This breaks the muddy water, forcing Quaxire to hit the ground as well. It's at this point the sandstorm subsides, revealing a very interesting sight. Noctow stands up, a little wobbly, but very much able to battle, while Klaxire collided headfirst into the ground, knocking itself out in the process. Surprised by this outcome, Bertha chuckles to herself. This boy is truly remarkable. The grit of his Pokemon and his on-the-fly battle style truly makes for an entertaining spectacle. She recalls Quaxire, thanking Ash for the exciting experience. However, her next choice will leave him and Noctow grounded. Gliscor, go! The flying scorpion takes to the field using its tail as a mount. Ash remembers battling Paul's Gliscor. That thing was tough, but this thing, just the size of it, far outclasses Paul's. Comparing Noctow, it too is far smaller than the scorpion bat. However, Ash knows the best way to battle a flyer is with the flyer. At his command, Noctow takes to the sky, ready for its next chance at victory. But this confidence is quickly overturned when Gliscor springs into the air above Noctow. Quickly responding, Ash orders an air slash. However, this is quickly met with a guillotine, driving Noctow into the battlefield, ending its poor attempt at another win. Recalling Noctow, Ash thanks it for the battle, even though he wished he had a chance to do more. But he doesn't have time to worry about what's happened, as the next battle has his full attention. His next choice needs to be one of bulk. Smiling, he has the perfect plan. Kingler, I choose you. The king crab hits the terrain, swinging its mighty pincers. Bertha is a bit thrown off by this, not because of the odd choice, but because it's the obvious one. But she gives Ash the benefit of the doubt, wanting to see where he goes with this. Ash has the choice of the first move. Kingler, use X scissor. This gives the crustacean the ability to hit Gliscor while airborne. Bertha, wanting to see where this leads, orders a sky attack. Gliscor charges its energy, avoiding the Excisor and striking Kingler with everything it has. Unbeknownst to Bertha, this is what Ash wanted. Kingler, use Vice Grip. Using its mighty pincers, Kingler clamps down on Gliscor's tail as the sky attack connects. With the force of this clamp on its tail, Gliscor cries in pain. Bertha becomes concerned, telling Gliscor to use Guillotine to free itself. But this is met with a crab hammer, canceling them out. Gliscor can't break free. Ash uses this to his advantage, ordering Kingler to slam it into the ground. With a thud and another, Gliscor is thrown around like a rag doll. However, Bertha seems to like she has a plan. This comes to fruition when she tells Gliscor to use Guillotine on the ground as it comes down. This causes the ground to crack under Kingler, offsetting its stance. To catch itself, Kingler has to release its grip, freeing Gliscor. Kingler struggles to get its footing. This is where Bertha brings out the big move, ordering Earthquake. The shaking ground amplifies the struggle that Kingler was already going through, causing it to tip into a fissure and get its big claws stuck. Seeing this as her opportunity, Bertha orders a guillotine that Gliscor cracks Kingler with, ending the battle in the process. Ash knew that it was a long shot, but he's proud of Kingler for the work he put in. Gliscor can't use his tail to gain altitude now, so it's going to be somewhat grounded. This prompts Ash's next choice. Dawn fan, I choose you. Bertha realizes Gliscor isn't able to battle at full capacity, so she recalls it and hopes that some rest will help, but that doesn't mean she's out, declaring Mamaswine, go! Now we have a clash of the titans, the frozen bacon versus the rubber bacon. Ash realizes he's at a disadvantage here, but Donphan and him don't care. Size and type don't mean anything, if you're stubborn enough, he says. Bertha appreciates this approach. Caution to the wind makes things more interesting. This prompts the start of a battle with a mud bomb from Mamaswine. Ash counters with a defense curl. Donphan curls up as the attack hits it with little damage. This does, however, turn part of the battlefield muddy, feeding all of the muddy water that Quagsire had used earlier in the battle. Ash sees this and tries to use it to his advantage, ordering a rollout. Donphan begins spinning at a rapid pace, slinging mud behind it. Its speed is impressive, but Bertha orders a blizzard. 
However, it's not aimed directly at Donphan, more so the ground. This causes two things. One, Donphan is hit for a super effective damage, and two, freezing it in place as the mud hardens into permafrost. Now trapped, Donphan flails wildly in a panic. As Ash tries to calm it down, this leaves an opening for another blizzard from Mamoswine at the order of its trainer. With the ice forming over the tire elephant, Ash has no other options but to recall his Pokemon, saving it from a sure knockout. With Ash now on the back foot, he chooses to call in an old friend, someone who hasn't battled in many generations. Primeape, I choose you! Ash's pig monkey Pokemon takes to the battlefield, ready to battle with Ash. This catches Bertha and the rest of the audience off guard. This is a Pokemon that Ash has never used in any competition. Hmm. This is unforeseen, Bertha thinks, but it could prove to be fruitful. Let's see what they can bring to the table. Mamoswine, use Mud Bomb. Smiling, Primate, are you ready? A vein pops from its head as it lets out a ferocious battle cry. Primate, use Cross Chop. Dodging the Mud Bomb, Primate is within the personal space of Mamoswine faster than even the Ash thought possible. Landing a Cross Chop, dropping Mamoswine in one hit. Wow, a critical Bertha says. This thing is powerful. It must have been through some intense training. Then, Bertha notices a belt that Primeape wears. A black belt? Something that heightens the power of fighting type moves? We will have to be careful. Meanwhile, Ash is complimenting Primeape. I didn't know that you had gotten that strong. Great job. But we have to stay tough. Bertha won't go down that easily. Primeape nods, turning its gaze to Bertha and her next choice. The duo won't have to wait long as Bertha sends in her next choice. Golem. The half-ton Goliath hits the field with a mild tremor. If that was meant to intimidate, it won't work, Bertha. Oh, Ash, I wouldn't expect it to. The battle starts with Golem using a double edge. To counter, Ash calls for another cross chop. Colliding, the two cancel each other out, but Ash notices that there is no recoil on Golem. So Rockhead is your ability. Very observant, Ash. Yep, you need more power if you hope to damage us. Feeling the need to honor Bertha's request, he orders a focus energy. Primate glares down Golem as it tightens its focus. It is then Primate lets out a huge battle cry. Bertha answers this response with another double edge. The high impact tackle slams into Primate as it was readying itself. Sliding back, Ash tells it to dig in. It's their turn. Use Cross Chop once more. Primate bolts down the field using its supreme speed to close the gap quickly. Bertha orders a rock blast in an attempt to stun the fighting type. While some do connect, Primate uses Cross Chop to break the boulders and connect with Golem. This was not enough to end the spherical monstrosity, but the critical hit it took sure was close enough. Knowing he needs to end this now, Ash orders a thrash from Primate. Letting go of any decorum, Primate speeds wildly toward Golem, causing a little fear in both Ash and Bertha at this savagery. Before she knows it, Primate is on top of Golem, hitting it as hard as it can. While Thrash itself has no type advantage, the pure power behind the attack is what's unsettling. Trying to regain control, Bertha calls for a fire punch. Golem manages to land one, However, the separation of the two is only momentary as Primeape is back on the attack. It's here that Ash notices something and tells Primeape to stop, but his fear is founded as it begins hurting itself in confusion. Ash pleads with it to stop, but it won't. So, to prevent any more damage to it, Ash recalls Primeape. While this is unfortunate for Ash, it did yield great information in Golem having Fire Punch. This informs Ash's next choice. Donphan, I choose you. Hitting the field, Donphan is a little shaken. That last battle with Mamoswide took a lot out of it. Ash starts out strong with the rollout. This immediately is countered with a Rock Blast from Golem. Unfortunately, it's not strong enough to hold back Donphan once its rollout is at full power. By the third strike, the fact that they are both ground types is no matter as Donphan collides with Golem as it executes a double edge. At first, it appears that Golem has the greater power, but this time the ground is harder than it was previously and Ash tied this to his strategy, allowing it to get the traction needed to bust through Golem. Unfortunately, Donphan loses control, crashing into a wall in the process. This brings things to a close as both are unable to battle. Both trainers recall their Pokemon. Ash breathes a sigh of relief, while Bertha smiles. This boy has surprises at every turn, but the battle must go on, and she plans on walking away with this win. Wasting no time, Bertha sends back in her Gliscor. While it can't use its tail due to the battle it had with Kingler, the Mon is still very much able to battle, for how long remains to be seen. Ash, on the other hand, has a different problem. Primeape is just as wild as he remembers. While it does listen, his lust for battle could be a problem. But Anthony sure did a great job in training it. Putting his worries aside, Ash knows that it's his best choice for now. Primeape, I choose you. Above the crowd in the champion's box, the elites watch looking on, as Cynthia is entranced with the battle. She doesn't want to miss any part of this. However, there is another, Lucian, who has noticed something about this battle, but he chooses to keep his suspicions to himself for now. Back in the battlefield, the aggression is evident. Primeape gives no ground as Ash tells it to use Cross Chop. 
Bertha tells Gliscor to take the attack, much to the surprise of Ash and Primate. However, he quickly realizes what Bertha was after when Gliscor uses the force of the cross chop to get airborne once more. This allows her to call for the best move that Gliscor has in this situation, Sky Attack. With his new height, it has the time to charge. Ash realizing this could get bad, tells Primate that it needs to wait. This is in direct contrast to its nature. It never sits still. But Ash tells Primate, listen, I know we have been apart for a long time, but you need to trust me. Looking back at its trainer, Primeape settles down. It lowers its hands and closes its eyes at the request of Ash. Now Primeape is in a state that it's never felt. The world and everything around it has a pace. It's usually moving too fast to notice it, but now it can feel it. The current and the wind. Gliscor will be riding it. You feel that, Primeape. That's what you're looking for. Nodding, it focuses. Bertha knows they are up to something, but the time has come. Gliscor, attack! Diving with all the power it has, Blyscor speeds in hopes of ending this battle, but Primate doesn't move, fighting every urge to do so. Then Ash and it feel it. Primate, use Rock Tomb! With a slam of its fists on the field, a prison bursts from the ground, capturing Gliscor, trapping it. Bertha knows she needs to free Gliscor, so she orders a guillotine. A thumping can be heard from inside the prison. With its window closing, Ash calls for one final cross chop. Gliscor bursts through the rock walls, only to be met with Primeape and all of its power. This crushes the rocks into pebbles as Gliscor is driven into the ground, ending it in one fell swoop. Bertha recalls it, hoping that Primeape's aggression wasn't too much, but that thought can wait, because now we've reached the moment that the audience has been waiting for. Bertha's final Pokemon. It's won many battles here in the past, and most of them are expecting the same. With no hesitation, Bertha sends in her final Pokemon, the one that Ash knew was coming from the beginning of the battle. Hippowdon. As it hits the field, a mighty sandstorm whips up, blanketing the battlefield and the vision of both Ash and Primeape. Knowing he needs to hold this off for as long as he can, Ash keeps Primeape in, but it's starting to tire from the battles it's had. Bertha tells Ash, this is it. At the end, only one will stand in victory. Smiling, that will be me, Bertha. Primeape, use focus energy. This on the surface is a good idea, but this gives a free turn to Hippowdon. When Bertha calls for a yawn, Bertha is trying to slow Primeape down by any means necessary. Knowing he's only got a few moves before the yawn takes effect, Ash orders a rock tomb in an attempt to trap the powerful Hippo. But its feeble stones are smashed when a stone edge crashes through and connects with Primeape. Because its guard was down, the stone edge hit with a critical, not enough to end the pig monkey, but definitely enough to make a statement, and wound Primeape's health as well as its pride. With one turn left, Ash tells Primeape all bets are off. Use Thrash! Fighting its way through the sandstorm, Primeape finds itself staring down Hippowdon, eye to eye as it unleashes a full fury. The tank of a hippo uses mighty jaws, chomping down on the hits coming its way, but to move its massive head is a struggle, so it's only able to stop some of Primeape's attack. However, this is no problem, as Bertha smiles, expecting Primeape to tire any second now. Unfortunately for the seasoned veteran, this assault does not subside. Realizing something's wrong, Bertha pivots, calling for a crunch. Hippowdon clamps down on one of Primeape's arms. Flaring in pain, it struggles to break free, but it can't. So, Ash, vital spirit, is it? Yep, my Primeape is too high strung to be put to sleep. Well, that's too bad. Guess we'll just have to do this the hard way. Hippowdon, use Earth Power. Suddenly, a column of magma and earth surround both the Pokemon, blowing the sandstorm away. Once everything cools down, Primeape is down, unable to battle. Ash recalls Primeape, thanking it for the hard-fought battle. Now, there's only one. Both trainers know they have reached the final stretch of this journey. Ash wastes no time. His final Pokemon has waited long enough for this rematch. Obama Snow, I choose you. The final combatant hits the field, activating a snow warning. Well, Ash, your Obama Snow has grown so much. The little one has become a strong battler. But is it enough, Bertha questions? Oh, don't worry, we've been training hard since last time, Bertha. Me and Obama Snow have thought of nothing since our last battle. The stoic snowman glares down Hippowdon. This time will be different. With the hail at its back, Obama Snow charges at Ash's command. Woodhammer! Taking a play from Ash's book, Bertha orders a stone edge, using them as a shield. Hippowdon blocks the Woodhammer while striking Obama Snow, all in one move. This drops Obama Snow to a knee. Hey, we have to be careful. We can't win this with power alone. Standing back up, the Yeti nods. Ash thinks on how they can get close. While watching the hail, Ash has an idea. A bomb of snow, use Blizzard. Aim it into the sky and spin. Bursting ice into the air, the hail begins to intensify. What follows is car-sized ice boulders dropping to the ground. While this doesn't affect a bomb of snow, through the veil of haze, everyone can hear Hippowdon yelp in pain. Bertha won't let this stand, calling for an earth power. The heat of this attack bursts from the ground, beginning to melt the supersized ice chunks. Obama Snow flinches at this, but Ash sees his opportunity. 
A bomb of snow. Use rock climb. Stomping his foot on the ground, a shockwave burst with magma and earth, pushing him out on far above the hail. Now the whole stadium can see the battle as a bomb of snow begins to traverse the makeshift mountain, making its way to the top. Bertha sees this as her chance to end this in one move, ordering one more earth power. The mountain begins to quake, losing stability as a bomb of snow climbs. Heat and earth burst from the sides, making a path to a bout on impossible, or it's so it seems. A bomb of snow, use blizzard, aim it at the mountainside. A bomb of snow creates a path to the top where Hippowdon waits. Use crunch, Bertha calls. Open its mighty jaws, Hippowdon prepares to end this the way they did in their first altercation. However, Ash and Obama Snow have learned. Use Grass Knot. However, Hippowdon's mouth is met with binding, bringing its jaws shut. Not one to be detoured, Bertha commands a Stone Edge. Knowing they have no choice, Ash tells Obama Snow they need to bring down the hammer. Use Wood Hammer. With the Stone Edge colliding with Obama Snow, it charges through, throwing caution to the wind. With all that it can muster, Obama Snow swings its mighty hammer. The force the snowman uses knocks Hippowdon from the crest of the mountain, sending it falling to the ground. Unfortunately, the earth power has run its course, and the mountain begins to crumble under Obama Snow. With the collapse of its footing, it begins to fall at the same pace as Hippowdon. Bertha knows this freefall will end this battle. Knowing she needs one last bit of damage, Bertha calls for a Stone Edge. Ash, realizing what she's trying to do, calls for a blizzard. But this isn't at Hippowdon. It's at the ground. This slows Obama Snow's fall, causing the Stone Edge to miss. With a thud, Hippowdon slams into the ground, leaving a cloud of dust in its wake. Obama Snow also lands rather hard, but still on his feet. While Hippowdon is unable to battle, the crowd goes wild as Ash smiles. We did it. No, you did it, Obama Snow. As it looks back at Ash, happy it's finally been able to bring a win to its friend. Bertha recalls Hippowdon. Looks like the next generation has promised, doesn't it, old friend? Fading to that night at the Pokemon Center, Ash and his Pokemon are eating, celebrating their win. This is where Dawn has finally decided to join her friend. But she seems somewhat different. She no longer has that look of sadness that she's had over the last two weeks. However, before Ash can say anything, Dawn cuts him off. Ash, where's Bertha? I need to ask her something. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen her since our battle. Frustrated, Dawn sighs deeply. Why do you need to talk to her, Ash asks. I just have a question that only she can answer. Well, I don't know. I assume she will be at my match later this week, Ash says. Who, Bertha? Yeah, it's customary all Elite Four members will be in attendance when we have battles. Turning, Don and Ash see the master of the fire type and Ash's next opponent, Flint. Your round was chosen about an hour ago, so I figured I'd come and say hi. Flint, so our battle's next? It is, Ash, and I expect a challenge, because from what I've seen thus far, you will lose. And this is where we are going to leave our story for now. And that's all we have for What If Ash Won the Sinnoh League, Part 14. How did you guys feel about this? The two separate battles in the same part, Aaron and Bertha. Both of them had different strategies and testing Ash in different ways. I was sure excited to write this part because tapping into the Sinnoh Elite Four isn't something that we've ever really gotten outside of the games. But what happened here is nothing in compared to what's going to be happening in the next episode because then we'll be facing Lucian and Flint. Only two more episodes left in this series, and it'll be closed out by the end of the year. It's crazy how much time has passed since this series started. But with all that being said, let me know what you guys thought about the battles. Who is your favorite, Aaron or Bertha? Which Pokemon do you think stuck out the most? And who did you like the most on Bertha or Aaron's team? And how did you feel about Torkoal and Abomasnow being the ones to get the win? Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, if you haven't already, Make sure to follow me on my other platforms, such as Twitter, or hop into my Discord if you want to talk with people that have like minds and may want to create content on your own or just talk Pokemon. And please, don't forget, if you want to donate a little bit extra, hop over to Patreon. For only $5 a month, you get up to a week's access to all of my What If content. And consider becoming a channel member. For only $5 a month, you'll get all the same perks that are on Patreon. I'm also going to be bringing an exclusive content to those two platforms coming here very soon. But with all that being said, Let's sign out the video the best way we know how, by thanking the sponsors, the patrons. Silver Heart Soul, Robert, Fujito Gaming 78, Andrew McCartney, Holosif, Julian Rodriguez, Ruben Watson, Lord Explosion Murder, Assassin 139, Flyer 943, Shadow Dragon, Tavern Landlord, K McKnight, Kevin Atran, Drax, Adrian Carr, Dino King, Dalen Silva, Fox King, Warney Taylor, Plus Ultraman, Megar, Mike Logan, Team Valor, Kendall Green, Earth Dragon, Josh, 
John Larson, Josh Van Mepplin, Forbidden Super, Dylan Nicholson, Gerald Smith, and Normandy 1998. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.